If I were to ask you to guess what the most commonly used material was on our planet, some of you would probably say water, and you'd be right. But if I were to ask you what you thought was the second most commonly used material on our planet, you might think timber or plastic or even steel. So you'll probably be surprised when I tell you that it is, in fact, concrete. Today, I would like to talk to you about how we make this concrete, the impact that this is having on our planet, and how advances in digital technologies are helping us to find more sustainable alternatives. Concrete, a mixture of cement, water and gravel, has been the foundation on which our cities and infrastructures have been built for over 3,000 years. Concrete is durable, it's flexible and it's strong. This year alone, the Portland Cement Association estimates that we will produce over 4 billion tonnes of cement globally for the production of concrete. So what's the problem? The problem is finite natural resources. The problem is acidification of our oceans. The problem is climate change. For every tonne of cement that we produce, through the crushing, heating, and grinding of limestone, over three quarters of a tonne of carbon dioxide is released into our planet's atmosphere. This will equal over 3.2 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide this year alone. The equivalent to the emissions of 581 million cars. That's all of the cars in the whole of Europe, and America, and China. In order for our planet to process this volume of carbon dioxide, we would need to plant a forest one and a half times the size of Ireland. So what else could we do? We can look to history for a solution. For over 3,000 years, iron was produced through a similar process of crushing and heating of ore. Then, with the technological advances of the Industrial Revolution, particularly in the areas of chemistry and physics, a new process evolved, which allowed for the mass production of the high-performance material, steel. Steel revolutionized the machines that we made and the cities we built. We are now on the brink of a fourth industrial revolution, a revolution based on digital technology. Technologies such as scanning electron microscopes, energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, and X-ray diffraction. These allow us to analyze the atomic and molecular nanostructures of materials, which predict their strength and chemical performance. These tools are allowing us to produce the next generation of ultra-high performance materials. Materials such as graphene, carbon nanotubes, and the focus of my research, geopolymer. Geo as in earth, poly, many, and mer parts. This inorganic polymer relies on its unique three-dimensional molecular nanostructure for its ultra-high performance. Any Minecrafters in the audience or families of Minecrafters are going to be familiar with the material obsidian. Obsidian is a smooth black material of unequaled strength and blast resistance. This is an obsidian fortress which my son Owen has uh, constructed to protect his Minecraft avatar from the hostile mobs of creepers and husks and endermen. The geopolymer obsidian is the number one choice of this generation of Minecraft engineers and architects when it comes to constructing high-performance structures. Geopolymer concrete is also the number one choice of NASA's space engineers, who are working with companies such as Apis Core to develop robots to 3D print concrete made with lunar regolith and Martian sand 
in order to construct the first 3D printed space habitations on the Moon and Mars. This is a building designed by space exploration architects. For the past two and a half years, my research has focused on the development of a unique ultra-high performance geopolymer concrete made using 96% industrial byproduct and waste materials. This concrete is more fire resistant, more flexible, and almost four times stronger than conventional concrete. It also produces 75% less carbon dioxide than conventional concrete. This diagram illustrates why geopolymer concrete is a sustainable alternative to conventional concrete. Conventional concrete is made using cement and water to bind virgin aggregate materials such as gravel and sand taken from quarries, riverbeds and beaches. Not only does this material rely on finite natural resources, but it also produces large volumes of carbon dioxide. The geopolymer concrete uses the byproduct materials of industrial processes such as water purification, waste incineration, and the production of steel. This is combined with waste materials such as quarry dust, agricultural waste, and recycled construction aggregates to produce high-performance, low-impact concrete. Like many families, my son and I enjoy watching movies. As a parent, I am struck by the diverse visions of the future which these films portray. From the dystopian, vertical stacked trailers and surveillance drones of Ready Player One, to the ecotopian mashup of skyscrapers, Victorian terraced houses and floating wind turbines of Big Hero 6. What these visions share is the recognition of how technology will shape our future. Where they differ is in how we choose to apply this technology. If we are to construct comfortable, modern, sustainable cities and infrastructure for the next generation, while protecting our planet's natural environments. We must use these technologies together with the knowledge we have acquired about how human activity is impacting on our planet. We must move from our current model of take, make and dispose to a more sustainable circular model of make, use and recycle. The high performance, low impact, Geopolymer concrete is one of the ways in which we can do this. Thank you.